Good evening, everyone. This hammer, which I thought was an Estwing, belonged to my father, and he gave it to me as sort of maybe a challenge. Uh, he liked this hammer. He loves this Estwing style, uh, twenty ounce hammer. He uses one pretty much every time we work together and he gave it to me to uh, fix up. Originally I had thought about stamping out leather and restacking it but I remembered a, a Jimmy DeResta video from many years ago where he took a, an S-Wing hatchet and replaced it with a wooden handle and I thought that that would be you know pretty good idea to try. So I, I really wasn't sure. Again, I thought this was an S-Wing hammer. Um, and I didn't really know what the condition really was because there was concrete and rust and, and everything else on the hammer. So first things first, I stripped off all the old leather stacks and then started cleaning it. This first wire wheel is really to get it as clean as possible before I put it in the rust remover. Uh, might sound counterintuitive, but it seems to make your, your rust remover last a lot longer. And this is where I realized that this wasn't actually an S-Wing, but uh, another maker called Malco, which is more known for uh, metalworking hammers. So, whatever. Maybe S-Wing made this for them? I don't really know. I wasn't able to find much information on it. But after the cleaning and taking it out of Evaporust, I realized that the hammer was in a lot worse shape than I actually knew. And uh, there was no way I was going to get it back to, like, perfect restoration. So functional, in this case, would do very well. So as usual, um, scraps of oak sitting around uh, from countertops that I made years ago for the house. So I thought this would make a nice handle. And again, just trying to remember kind of what Jimmy DeResta did in his, I and mean, he had some pretty smart ideas and kind of just you know, shamelessly ripping him off. I mean, obviously, you know, if you're not inspired by DeResta, I mean, get out of here. Anyway, um, I routed out um, a groove in each one of the scales, and uh, then I had to come back and do some file work. Uh, I wanted to keep the end cap. I think that that's like a real big statement piece on any S-Wing hammer, or in this case, Mal Malco. Uh, so, got to do a little routing, a little uh, hand chiseling to make it fit. And then the other thing I wanted to do um, in the handle of the ham hammer was a, a hole already pre-drilled, so I thought running a, a, a walnut dowel through there would, would be cool. It would have a nice little contrast piece at the end. Um, you know, I'm always <laughs> making these dowels now, and uh, I don't know, I thought it would be pretty cool. Now, for shaping the handle, um, I wasn't totally sure what to do, and um, <laughs> I am no Jimmy DeResta, so I wasn't going to try his method um, of bandsaw shaping. I'm just not confident enough in my bandsaw skills. I did take a slice off, and I really didn't like that. Um, to, to bond, uh, the two scales together, I'm using just a two-part epoxy and crystal clear. Uh, I had it lying around from another project. Um, but I decided to go back to hand tools, um, because to me, it, it's just, it's very satisfying and it's not stressful. There's not a lot of noise. I can do it. You know, uh, we live in a very small space, so... My workshop is on the other side of our bedroom, which is where our kid sleeps and takes naps and all those sort of things. So uh, I worked on this for multiple days and, you know, if something stressful would be going on in my office. I'd, you know, take a break, uh, take a break and uh, come in, uh, take some shavings off. And um, first I used a traditional hand plane and then I used a spoke shave. Uh, I picked the spoke shave up at um, like a flea market quite a long time ago and had plans on like you know tuning it up and getting it ready and this kind of just forced me into getting the um the blade sharpened and going at it uh coincidentally while i was working on this another a really nice spoke shave came into my life a gift from a friend ryan uh so 
I also put that to uh, to use as well. For shaping and you know, sort of some of the polishing, I went back to the old mini grinder. And I love this thing. It's so ridiculous. And I would love a big, humongous, you know, belt grinder. But uh, my shop is super, super small. So why not use super small tools? It just took longer. Here's the little end cap. Now, typically this is to keep the, uh, the leather on. But all of these handles, you know, they have them. Even my wooden uh, handled S-Wing hammer uh, from the factory has a sort of end cap. And I just didn't think the hammer looked right without it. So I decided to um, reattach it. Now, one thing I did here was I actually extended the handle uh, a little longer. My dad's a, a fairly big guy with fairly big hands. And I used an S-Wing hammer that I use in the shop um, for length of the handle. Um, and then, you know, went back and went through multiple grits. I think I went up to like a 400 grit or so uh, on finishing it. Um, and then mineral sp spirits to clean it up. And then um, I wanted to use uh, a better feeling type of finish. And so I went with Danish oil. And then on top of the Danish oil, uh, I did like, I think like three coats over the whole um, hammer, um, claw, face, the whole thing. It helps prevent rust. Um, Danish oil is fantastic. Um, so after I did multiple coats, then the other thing I did was I put paste wax on it. To me, paste wax feels really good in the hand and it knocks down some of the shine from the Danish oil. Thank you. Have a good day. Sometimes you realize.